Hi guys, this is Vicky from Intuition Institution and a couple of weeks back my friend asked me to make a video on hair fall. So what I did is I took a two hour scientific lecture on hair loss, try to understand how hair works and how the treatments work and as of 2024 I now understand how much science can help and how much it can't help. But before we dive into the video, I want to address the number one reason why hair loss occurs which is psychological stress. You see, stress can come from anywhere in life. Work-related stress, your girlfriend breaking up, or your loved ones dying, and all this stress causes your hair to fall out. But the hair doesn't fall immediately. It takes two to three months after your initial stressful event for all your hair to start falling out. It's called the telogen phase. But within those two, three months, hopefully, let's say you have recovered from your stressful event, say your girlfriend breaking up, but then looking at all your hair falling out, you get this new stress, which is even worse than the previous one. Because now you are in a toxic loop of stress, where stress is causing your hair loss and hair loss is causing your stress. Deadlock. And the only way to break out of this toxic loop is to stop fearing baldness and start accepting baldness. It's easier said than done. But trust me, hair is not the only way to look stylish. For example, you can hit the gym put on muscle mass and compensate for your hair loss with your muscle gains. That's what Vin Diesel and Rock do. And if you don't have time to work on your physical health, then you can work on your mental health like Rajinikant. If you look at the style song from the movie Sivaji, Rajini proves he can be stylish even when he is black, even when he is white, even when he has hair and even when he has no hair. So style is not made up of only your external looks, but also your internal mental health. It's a summation of both. So when you lack on one, you can still use the other to look stylish. And the best and only way to significantly improve your mental health is through meditation. Just imagine yourself already bald, that state that you're not even able to imagine, that you're so scared of. Imagine that that state has already arrived and then let yourself feel all the shame, fear, insult and pain that you would actually feel if you really go bald and then take a slow deep breath and relax. Inhale, exhale. Do this every day for 5 minutes where you visualize and you relax. Visualize and relax. You will become just like Rajnikant. So now that stress is addressed, before we move on to hair treatments like minoxidil, finasteride, microneedling and caffeine, we must first understand how hair works. You see, hairs are just like trees. Like how trees are fixed to the ground because a portion of the tree is buried under the soil. Similarly, a portion of our hair is buried under our skin which helps the hair be fixed to our head. And this pit underneath where our hair is buried is called the hair follicle. And we have millions of hair follicles on our scalp from which hair keeps growing out. And how does hair grow? Well, it works exactly like how babies grow. Stem cells. After sex, once the egg and the sperm are joined together, the mother starts eating lots and lots of food during her pregnancy and all these nutrients are getting carried to the mother's womb where the stem cells multiply and differentiate into the human body. So there are two things that stem cells do. One is they multiply and other is they differentiate. Differentiate meaning some of the cells turn into the head, some of the cells turn into the leg, some of the cells turn into the hand. That's called as differentiating. Similarly, the same thing happens in our hair follicle. The pit or hair follicle is basically our mother's body and at the base of the pit, you can find this bulb shape which is basically our mother's womb. This is where all these stem cells reside and these stem cells get their nutrients from all the blood vessels that are underneath. So basically, just like a tree drinks all the water and from the water gets its nutrients, the stem cells at the bulb of the hair follicle drinks blood takes all the nutrients, basically the food, that we as people eat. So again, the stem cells here multiply and differentiate, but they all differentiate into the same protein called keratin. And hair is just a huge building that is made up of keratin blocks. So each new keratin gets added to the bottom and the hair keeps growing longer and longer. So it's different from how we build buildings, where we put the next brick on top of each other, but in hair we put it at the bottom. So it's like stacks and cues in computer science. But we can't leave this hair follicle pit open. So there is this sebaceous gland which basically creates sebum, oil and this oil creates a seal where it seals the top of the pit. So if you go on a shower, if you pour water on your head, that water doesn't 
get into your bloodstream because water and oil ripple and the sebum creates a seal between the outside world and the body. So that is the structure of the hair. Now inside the bulb where the stem cells are there, these stem cells keep creating keratin after keratin and keep growing the hair longer and longer for 2 to 8 years. Just imagine, for the past 8 years, your barber has been cutting the same hair. This is called the anagen phase. And at the end of 8 years, the hair moves on to the catagen phase where the stem cells connection to the blood vessels is cut. Like how we cut the umbilical cord of a baby after it's born. So because the blood supply is cut, the hair stops growing and this cutting procedure takes some 2 to 3 weeks. After which the hair goes into what we call telogen phase where the hair simply sits in the scalp for 2 to 3 months before falling out. Baby delivery. <laughs> Once the hair is gone, a new hair comes in its place which again grows for 8 years, anagen phase, then umbilical cord, catagen phase, then telogen phase. So every hair that comes from inside the same hair follicle goes through these three life cycles of hair. So if we consider our head as a forest where all these hairs are like trees, then at any point in time, 90% of the trees or hairs are in the anagen phase, growing phase, while 10% of the trees or hairs are in the telogen phase, meaning they are dead and they are waiting to fall off. Which is why every day you lose 100 hairs, which is normal, but you still have a head full of hair because 90% of the hair is in the anagen phase. So it's like our society. The senior citizens die while the others take care of the society. The world has to move on. So now that we are done with anatomy of hair, let's move on to hair loss. Basically there are two types of hair loss. One is permanent hair loss, irreversible, and another is reversible hair loss. Irreversible hair loss is nothing but scarring. So let's say you are on a bike accident and you get a scar. Now no hair will grow out of that scar. All the hair follicles have been permanently destroyed and no hair will ever grow out of that patch of skin where there is a scar. And this type of scarring happens on our scalp also when we get infections. For example, right now I am having dandruff in my head and dandruff are nothing but dead skin cells. And my skin cells are dying up there because there is a fungi called malassezia that basically eats up all the oil that my sebaceous gland secretes and then it excretes an acid which basically destroys all the skin cells on my scalp. So those white flaky things that we see as dandruff are nothing but your dead skin cells. Now if I keep ignoring this and if the fungus gets more and more extreme then this will lead to other secondary infections and soon my entire hair follicle will get destroyed and I will get permanent hair loss because of scarring. So if you are experiencing any itching or pain in your scalp, which I do right now, then go consult a dermatologist and get it fixed. Don't ignore it because this is the irreversible kind of hair loss that we are talking about. And when it comes to reversible kind of hair loss, it is mainly caused due to aging or poor lifestyle habits. Let's talk about poor lifestyle habits first. So if you take a mother's pregnancy, now just like in pregnancy, where the mother's hormones are very important for the baby's growth. Similarly, for the stem cell population in our hair follicles, for them to grow properly, there is a growth hormone called IGF-1, basically insulin growth factor 1. And our body releases this hormone whenever we sleep at night and when we have regular sleep cycles, meaning every day we go to bed at the same time. For example, if your sleeping time is 10.30, then plus or minus 30 minutes, say from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, you must every day go to bed during that one hour time window. Only then you will keep receiving that growth hormone that gets secreted during sleep. But if you are like me and if you sleep like 1 o'clock one day, like 3 o'clock one day or morning 9 o'clock one day, then you will skip the growth hormone and the stem cell populations in your head will go into the catagen or telogen phase instead of staying in the anagen phase and growing. And the second lifestyle factor is exercise and diet. Because IGF-1 means insulin growth factor 1, since the growth hormone has the word insulin in it, it actually depends upon insulin for its effectiveness. So if you have insulin resistance in your body, say you are obese or if you have diabetes, then the effectiveness of IGF-1 growth hormone reduces in your body. And what do you do to improve insulin sensitivity? Well, basically you must start exercising, go on strict diets and reduce your body mass index to the right BMI. Basically, you must get fit. And if you are suffering from diabetes, then you must take medicines like myonositol, berberine, metformin, which help improve insulin sensitivity in your body. But please consult a doctor before taking them. So getting proper sleep and exercising and staying fit. These things help 
IGF one's effectiveness and IGF one's release. But there is a third way to increase IGF one in our body, that is to take them externally as a tablet. But this is not a good idea. In fact, it is really dangerous because externally taking IGF one can increase your chances for cancer. Because IGF one, the growth hormone, encourages the growth of all cells, all tissues in your body. So if there is a random cancer rogue cell that is born in your body, then usually your immune system takes care of it and kills it. But if you are externally injecting IGF-1, then you are increasing the cancer cell to grow and you are more likely to grow the cancer, develop cancer and die from cancer. And similarly, when you inject stem cells externally, you suffer from the exact same problem because cancer is nothing but a rogue stem cell. So externally injecting stem cells or externally injecting growth hormones help the hair grow but also for cancer to grow. So stick to exercise, diet and fixed sleep routines in order to naturally manipulate the growth hormones and stem cells in your body. So now that stress is covered, scarring is covered and lifestyle habits are covered, let's move on to the fourth reason why we lose our hair which is aging. Now there are two things that happen as we age. One is blood supply to all parts of our body becomes poor as we age and second our hair follicle sensitivity to the hormone called DHT increases as we age. So all hair fall treatments focus either on improving blood supply or decreasing DHT hormone in our blood and the best hair fall treatment is to try doing both. Let's look at them one by one. Let's look at blood supply first. Now as we age there is a lot of plaque built up in our arteries so the diameter of the blood vessels shrink and the blood supply is poor all across the body. So this is analogous to old buildings where there is a lot of dirt built up in the pipes so the diameter of the pipes reduce and water supply becomes poor. This is called as atherosclerosis and it is very common at old age. Which is why heart attacks and strokes are very common at old age because at one point these vessels completely close and stops blood supply to the heart, heart attack or brain stroke. Now there are four ways in which we can improve blood supply to our scalp. One is directly massaging our scalp with our hands. So the heat generated increases blood supply to the scalp. But this is very temporary because as soon as we stop massaging, the heat goes away and the blood supply also comes back to normal. Another technique, second technique is to use a light ray cap where there are light rays or radiations on your scalp, heating up the scalp and increasing blood supply. But this is also temporary because as soon as you remove the cap, the blood supply is back to normal. But that's a third technique which is taking the medicine minoxidil. Now minoxidil was originally developed to cure hypertension. So if you have a very high blood pressure and if you take minoxidil, minoxidil basically vasodilates the blood vessels meaning the blood vessels relax and expand so the pressure drops and the problem gets solved. So in our case if this is the blood vessel and if this is the clogged blood vessel then relaxing the blood vessels gets it back to the original position and restores blood supply to all parts of the body. And the best thing about minoxidil is this is 24 7. Round the clock blood supply is always increased to our scalp. But the only problem with minoxidil is overdosing. If you don't consult with the doctor and if you overdose on minoxidil then you will increase the blood vessels so much that you drop the blood pressure too low. So because of this you start experiencing low blood pressure problems like headache, dizziness and swelling of the ankles. Why swelling? Because basically gravity is pulling down on the blood but the blood doesn't have enough pressure to fight gravity and get back to the heart. Now aside from low blood pressure there is another problem that minoxidil causes, overdose of minoxidil causes and that is increasing the hormone prolactin. Now prolactin is a hormone that's involved in milk production and lactation. So when you overdose on it you start to develop male breasts and start producing milk. And the other problem of high prolactin is Prolactin destroys dopamine. Now people often confuse dopamine with reward and pleasure. But dopamine is not pleasure, dopamine is energy. Now when you feel high energy, meaning you are not feeling lazy and you feel the motivation to do everything in life, it feels good. But feeling good is not the same as pleasure. So when prolactin destroys dopamine, you start to become lazy and you fall into depression. Basically you don't get the motivation to do anything. And along with general energy levels, your sexual libido also decreases. Meaning when a hot attractive girl passes you by, you don't feel any excitement for her because your energy levels are down. So in order to have a head full of hair and attract a female, if you overdose on minoxidil, 
you lose all the motivation drive energy and sexual libido in order to pursue and mate with the girl so basically operation success but patient did so work with a doctor to get the right prescription for minoxidil otherwise you will suffer from low blood pressure headache dizziness swelling of ankles and you will suffer from low dopamine reduced sexual libido reduced energy depression and you will suffer from high prolactin basically developing breast milk so minoxidil can be taken either as a tablet or as a cream now when you take the cream you have to apply it on your scalp and wait for 3 to 5 minutes before washing it away why wait for 3 to 5 minutes because the alcohol in the minoxidil solution will dissolve the sebum and break the oil seal so that minoxidil can enter the hair follicle and enter your blood stream so taking minoxidil tablet and putting a minoxidil solution are both one and the same thing minoxidil at the end of the day enters your blood stream and the last thing to remember is minoxidil prevents hair loss but doesn't reverse hair loss so minoxidil opens up the blood supply and helps the hair to grow but if the hair follicles are completely destroyed then minoxidil doesn't create new hair follicles so if you find that your hair is thinning then you must go on minoxidil but if you are too late and if the hair follicles are completely destroyed and if if you have gone bald then going on minoxidil is of no use because minoxidil is a prevention not a cure and one last thing to remember is minoxidil is a lifelong dependence once you are on minoxidil you have to keep taking the tablet to hold on to the hair that you just saved through minoxidil which brings me to my last point to improve blood flow which is micro needling so basically you take a derma roller with 1 mm to 2.5 mm needles and you roll it on your scalp this causes micro damages to your skin micro not macro because if it's macro it will cause scarring and you will lose hair so these micro damages to the skin improves blood flow to the region because the trauma or damage triggers healing mechanisms in your body so it's just like going to the gym and causing micro tears in your muscle by working out so blood flow naturally increases to the scalp to help with the healing process and it is 24/7 even when you are asleep so if you are suffering from overdose of minoxidil then instead of chemically increasing blood flow to the region try mechanically increasing blood flow to the region by using a derma roller and causing micro trauma for example i took a 0.5 mm derma roller and tried it on my face to increase beard growth so it's not just old people who need to use derma roller even middle aged men can use derma roller to improve blood flow because increased blood flow is always good for hair growth so now that blood supply is done let's talk about the last major cause of baldness in old people which is dying stem cell population and destruction of hair follicles which happens due to the increased sensitivity to dht hormone you see right from childbirth till old age dht is always there in our body but as we get older there are these cells called derma papilla cells inside our hair follicles right at the root which become hypersensitive to these dht molecules so what do these derma papilla cells do basically derma papilla cells determine what life stage the stem cells need to be in so they decide when and for how long in which life stage the stem cells need to be in but if these papilla cells absorb a lot of dhts then they order these stem cells to reduce their anagen phase and increase their telogen phase meaning your hair doesn't grow for 8 years now it may be grows only for 8 months or something so instead of getting long thick hairs you start getting short thin hairs and moreover since the telogen phase is increasing these hairs stick around without falling and leaving room for the new hairs and slowly over time as these derma papilla cells absorb more and more dhts they slowly miniaturize the follicles basically they reduce the size of the hair follicles and they order the stem cell population to die so there is no hair follicle and there is no hair so both the hair follicle is destroyed and stem cell population is destroyed so there is no hair and you are bald this is called as androgen related alopecia where alopecia is a scientific name for baldness and androgen is nothing but dht so for stopping this type of baldness we must stop the derma papilla cells from absorbing dht and what is dht well dht is nothing but dihydrotestosterone basically two hydro groups are added to testosterone 
and this is done by an enzyme called 5 alpha reductase now when i am talking about testosterone you might get this doubt saying even women go bald so what is the mechanism for them well testosterone is present in both women and men so if men have this much testosterone and this much estrogen then women have this much testosterone and this much estrogen meaning both men and women have testosterone as well as estrogen and for both men and women testosterone is greater than estrogen so the only difference is men are this much and women are this much so point is in both men and women testosterone is present and in both of them 5 alpha red taste converts the testosterone into dry hydrotestosterone so both of them go bald as the dermapapilla cells start absorbing thts but what differs between men and women is the pattern of baldness so men go bald at the front here uh, and here and sometimes even in the whole front or they go bald at the crown back side of the head or they go bald everywhere so there are like four patterns either only these two areas and everywhere else there is hair or the entire front portion or hair is gone only at the back and present everywhere else or everything happens all together but for women hair loss happens only at the midline and slowly it spreads starting from the midline so it's called a christmas tree pattern so although dst is being absorbed by every hair follicle in your skull it is these hair follicles that are more sensitive to dht and which regions are going to be more sensitive depends on your genetics meaning you have to look to your mother's line to see how your baldness pattern is going to be so the only way to treat baldness is to attack and kill 5 alpha reductase enzyme so that it stops converting testosterone to dht so the dermapapilla cells stop absorbing dht and so stem cells are not ordered to reduce their anagen phase this and increase their telogen phase but there is a small problem because dht is involved in lots of important body functions not just the hair for example even when we were a child dht is the hormone that was responsible for developing the male genitalia penis so obviously destroying all the dht in our body is going to cause libido problems basically you will get erectile dysfunction and you are going to lose your sexual libido and not just that similar to dopamine even dht has a role to play in energy levels so basically your motivation and drive are going to get destroyed and you're going to fall into depression so when a hot girl passes you by you won't feel any any energy to pursue her and you won't even feel the sexual attraction that you are feeling towards her because you are not going to feel horny anymore so similar to overdosing of minoxidil even destroying dht too much causes the same problems so there are drugs in the market available called finasteride and dutasteride which are very effective in reducing dht for example 0.01 microgram of finasteride reduces dht levels by 50% and 0.5 mg of dutasteride reduces dht by 95% but the worst part is it takes about 6 months for people to see any visible difference so young men who are very impatient just after 1 2 weeks of taking dutasteride or finasteride get dejected that they are not seeing any results so they start increasing their dosages and fall into severe depression and what's worse is in minoxidil when you stop minoxidil your depression goes away but in finasteride especially with young men even after quitting the drugs the depression is permanent so even after stopping the drugs you are permanently damaged that you are depressed for life long and sometimes the depression gets so worse that people commit suicide but all of this happens only to young men men of age 20s and 30s but men of age 40s they can take finasteride and dutasteride but not get any permanently damaging depression problems so my advice is if you are in your 20s and 30s don't even think about finasteride and dutasteride but if you are in your 40s then start with the lowest dose possible wait for 6 months at least to increase your dosages and always get your doctor's permission so what is the solution for people at the age of 20s and 30s well instead of using hard drugs to decrease dht levels to dangerous levels you can use other remedies which will mildly reduce dht and give you good results for example there are four ways to do that number one is applying caffeine on your scalp not drinking caffeine because drinking coffee doesn't help that much because if the brain absorbs all the caffeine and stays awake so you want to topically apply the caffeine so that the hair follicles get most of the caffeine now caffeine improves igf1 
insulin growth hormone 1 and also mildly reduces TST levels. In fact, caffeine works equivalent to minoxidil in showing hair regrowth and hair maintenance. Second thing is eat saw palmetto berries. Basically, you have to eat 300 milligrams every day and you have to split it into three meals, basically 100 milligrams each, so that its effects are always in your blood the whole day. Saw palmetto berries are also shown to reduce DHT levels mildly. Third way is to consume turmeric. Take at least one or two grams of turmeric every day. This reduces DHT levels mildly. And, and last of all, take ketoconazole 2% concentration shampoo whenever you're taking bath. And just like minoxidil, you have to leave the ketoconazole for three to five minutes in your scalp so that it penetrates and gets into your bloodstream. So these four techniques, you can also use all of them together in order to reduce your DHT levels mildly so that you have only the hair growth benefits but not the side effects. So to summarize everything, we need to sleep at the right time, exercise and have a right diet in order to keep getting the growth hormone IGF-1. Number two, you need to use derma roller and cause micro damages in your scalp so that you increase blood supply throughout the day. Number three, you have to use caffeine, turmeric, ketoconazole and saw palmetto berries in order to reduce your DHT levels. Now stronger roots are minoxidil to increase your blood supply but when you overdose there are severe side effects but as soon as you get these side effects you can start reducing your minoxidil dosages so they are still better than finasteride but at the same time once you start taking minoxidil you can never stop minoxidil and when it comes to DHT levels taking finasteride and deuteristride is very dangerous if you're in the age of 20s and 30s and even in the age of 40s, you need to work with your doctor, take regular blood checkups and monitor the DC levels in your blood. So these are the three techniques in which you can stop hair fall and promote hair growth. Increase the blood supply, derma roller, catch the growth hormones, sleep, diet, exercise and reduce the DC levels. Caffeine, ketoconazole, saw palmetto berries and turmeric. Stay away from minoxidil and stay away from finasteride. Minoxidil is also fine, but finasteride, don't even think about it if you are at the age of 20s and 30s. I'll see you in the next video.